Hello and welcome to the Capitol Report on NTD Television. I'm Steve Lance. Two major departures shocking the news industry. Primetime television host Tucker Carlson is parting ways with Fox News, while CNN fires host Don Lemon. NTD's Iris Tao brings us more. And Tucker Carlson now out at Fox News. The network confirmed it on Monday morning, saying it's parting ways with his primetime host, whose show had been among the most popular in all of cable television, averaging more than 3 million viewers per episode. Here's Fox News' Harris Faulkner announcing it on air. Watch. We want to thank Tucker Carlson for his service to the network as a host and prior to that as a long-term contributor. In a statement, Fox News says Carlson's last show was on last Friday, but Carlson didn't seem to know that, or at least not on air. He said this at the end of his Friday show. And we'll be back on Monday. In the meantime, have the best weekend with the ones that you love, and we'll see you then. The New York Times, citing two unnamed sources, says Carlson was only informed of the change Monday morning. And now some conservative politicians and commentators are applauding Carlson's work. Congresswoman Lauren Boebert says she stands with Carlson. Arizona's former gubernatorial candidate Carrie Lake says he's now freed and uncensored. And the organization Turning Point USA says Carlson's now just getting started. But some liberal lawmakers cheered the fact that Carlson no longer has a primetime platform. All this as Don Lemon, a primetime anchor for CNN, announced on the same day that he had been terminated without having spoken to CNN management. Meanwhile, CNN is now calling Lemon's claim inaccurate, saying he was offered an opportunity to meet with management. Reporting from Washington, D.C., Iris Tao with TV News. A lawyer for Hunter Biden is accusing multiple conservatives of wrongdoing with regard to the president's son. This just days after allegations that President Biden's campaign covered up the laptop story. And today's Arian Pazdar has the latest. Hunter Biden attorney Abi Lowell is going on the offense to defend the president's son. He sent a letter about Congresswoman Marjorie Taylor Greene to the House Oversight Committee on Monday. Lowell calls Green's statements about Hunter Biden a spray of shotgun pellets of personal vitriol. The letter also links videos in which the congresswoman talked about Hunter Biden. He was engaged in an actual human trafficking ring, and he was paying a lot of money for it. Lowell says Green's allegations aren't ethical and that none of these could possibly be deemed to be part of any legitimate legislative activity. After the letter was sent on Monday, Green tweeted that the entire government has proof Hunter Biden was involved in human sex trafficking, and they have done absolutely nothing about it. But just imagine if Hunter's last name was Trump. Meanwhile, on Monday, Lowell also sent a letter to the Treasury Department's Office of Inspector General. He says that former Trump White House aide Garrett Sigler published five suspicious activity reports related to Hunter Biden. Unauthorized disclosure of such reports can be prosecuted. These two letters come just days after allegations came out of President Biden's campaign covering up the Hunter Biden laptop story. The campaign at the time dismissed the laptop story as Russian disinformation. Republican Senator Ron Johnson on Sunday said they wrote a letter to interfere in our election to a far greater extent than anything China or Russia could ever hope to do. Ariane Pastar, NTD News. Our next guest will be shedding some light on a somewhat unique yet concerning issue commercial surrogacy, and in particular, the rising phenomenon of Chinese nationals seeking surrogate mothers in the United States. Why are they doing this, and what are some of the national security concerns involved? Emma Waters, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me on today. Of course, Emma, uh, just when we thought we had it all figured out when it comes to the CCP, every possible angle of how they pose a national security risk to us, another one seems to pop up. Uh, the latest one here I'd like to ask you about is this rent-a-womb phenomenon taking, taking place here in the U.S. What exactly is this and why should we be concerned? So the Chinese rent-a-womb industry in the United States refers to Chinese nationals who quite literally rent the wombs of American citizens through international commercial surrogacy contracts. So commercial surrogacy refers to people who hire another woman um, to gestate and birth their child for a fee. And in the United States in particular, because of our birthright citizenship law, any child that's born in the United States, even if they're 100% genetically Chinese and if their parents are Chinese, 
Chinese nationals. When they're born in the United States through an American surrogate, they gain and maintain the full rights of U.S. citizenship. So, Emma, from what I understand, um, you know, you have this, this baby that will become a U.S. Uh, citizen, but also the parents. And I think, correct me if I'm wrong, one of the concerns is that a lot of people affording this type of service here in the U.S. are going to have very close ties to the upper echelons of the CCP and various apparatuses there, potentially, which could cause a severe threat to us down the line. And that's exactly right. So commercial surrogacy contracts, especially international ones, can cost upwards of $200,000 to $300,000 per child. And that's calculating the costs of in vitro fertilization treatments, of the of actually paying the surrogate herself, of working with clinics, as well as any of the travel fees when it comes to visiting the United States or bringing the child home. So this really does self-select for a special wealthy class of Chinese nationals. Now, when the child who's born in the United States of these Chinese nationals turns 21, parents are actually eligible to apply for a green card visa, um, which would guarantee, if accepted, citizenship. And this is a far easier route than taking a more traditional citizenship application. So like you're saying, um, when these children turn 21 and now parents um, also have access to U.S. citizenship, there's a lot of concerns about how the CCP may use and abuse that connection that they have. Whether or not it's the CCP um, directly encouraging or condoning this, we have no way of knowing, but we do know that it puts these children and their parents very close to U.S. interests um, and access to education, to insurance, and to, all, I mean, all the benefits of being a U.S. citizen. So is this another one of those issues that we tend to turn a blind eye uh, toward, like, say, the Confucius Institutes for two decades due to the money that pours in behind the scenes? And what does more oversight look like on a federal level, level and where do we begin? Yeah, so like you're saying, we actually have no federal regulation that governs commercial surrogacy contracts, domestic or internationally. Um, and this is a huge money-making business. Um, so the reproductive industry is making millions, if not billions of dollars annually um, in the United States, not to mention beyond that. So it's a huge interest on the state level to keep encouraging um, these contracts. Um, but also when it comes to um, yeah, connect connecting Chinese interests, there's a lot of money here with Chinese citizens actually working at some of these fertility clinics in the United States. Um, so they either have employment ties, they have residency ties, um, or education ties to China. So there's a lot of money and a lot of focus on keeping this under the radar. Um, so one of the first steps that we would like to see taken um, is a simple data accountability and tracking system. So in the same way that we have the Agricultural um, Investment Disclosure Act in the United States that ensures that any foreign nationals who buy farmland in the United States must be reported we should have a similar law in place ensuring that any foreign nationals who are purchasing um, surrogates and bearing children in the United States through them um, are going into a federal tracking system. So if anything, at least we know who these parents and their children are, because right now we have no way of knowing who they are. Emma Waters, thank you so much for shedding some light on this convoluted but very uh, important issue. Thanks for having me on. Thank you for watching the Capitol Report. If you want to see our full broadcast, check us out at epochtv.com.